Shalom, Shalom, this is the brother Emma Wan coming to you with another lesson for the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. First and foremost, I want to give all the praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakaka Dash. Uh, I want to give a uh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and uh, peace, blessings, and salutations to the Archimedes that's doing this work in truth and in sincerity. So I just wanted to play this short video. You know, this guy's been making a lot of headlines recently. Uh, we know why he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, he was accused of being an anti-Semite, uh, even though he is one. But that's not what this is going to be about. Um, yeah, man, he just done this little video, and he's kind of rambling on about things, you know, and it's just, it's just showing you that. It, the confusion that's going on right now with this man and how you know the Lord has basically got this this guy you know bringing out bringing attention let's say putting bringing attention to this truth but not in the way that we would bring attention to it and you know the man is clearly searching for some kind of truth all right, but I'm going to show you in this video that you know he's he there's there's a there's confusion going on, man. All right, and you got IUIC up in the video, bringing more confusion to the situation. All right, but now I'm just going to play it, and I've got some scriptures lined up. It's going to be a quick one, you know, just a quick kit, man. So yeah, let me just play this now and listen to what this man's got to say. Have a great start to your week. Make sure that you put God first or whoever you call creator first. Make sure you stay prayed all the way up. Nothing but gratitude should be in our hearts for being able to inhale fresh air, to be able to exhale all the things that do not serve us, uh, to continue to serve our fellow human beings, our brothers and sisters. We're all related. We are all related. If you truly believe in the oneness of the universe and what God has created, you know, not a lot of people like to talk about God and get all spiritual, but I am that person. You know, I, I cannot go a day without being grateful for uh, the life God has chosen me for, the role that I play out here in helping change things and continuing to be about the things that I say I'm about, lead with my actions. So that's all. saw that and there's a lot of confusion up in there you know the man's talking about you know everyone being under the same you know be everyone being the same everyone's not the same man he's got he's got an egyptian anchor around anchor around his neck however you pronounce it um and he doesn't know he doesn't know who's praying to man all right, because if he's following these guys in the video, they don't, they're not bringing out the name of the Lord for, and, and, and our Savior. They're not bringing out the names of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshai, man. I mean, look at the thumbnail in another video. I watched this video as well. And it's, uh, it says Kyrie's army invades New York. Kyrie's army, man. You know what I mean? They're showing out.
for this guy who's a celebrity, man. Yet, they're quick to curse out the men of GMS who are doing the will of the Heavenly Father, man. Righteously and truthfully and sincerely, the correct way. All right, we don't want to hear defending uh, these wicked celebrities, man, because he is wicked, man. How are you going to say that you, you, who are you praying to, first and foremost? You ain't even got the name, man. Like I said, are you YCA teaching you the name? And I can understand, like I said at the beginning of this, he's clearly searching for something, for some kind of knowledge, man. But he ain't going to get it through um, learning from these guys, man. You know, he's got, a, he's got um, you know, idolatry hanging from his neck while he's talking about praying. Who are you praying to, man? You know, the universe is one. The u we're not as one here. Even as a people, you know, the Israelites aren't as one, man. All right? You got, you got, um, are you, I see, doing army drills in the streets? You know, anyway, look, let me just get into the scripture, man. The scriptures do the got one lined up already, so let's just get this. So it says, uh, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer is for to Yahweh is for Israel. So let me read that properly. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. All right? He doesn't have it according to knowledge, man. All right? He's gone, he's going down the, you know, I say this a lot when I'm talking about, you know, when I'm bringing out my testimony about coming to this truth. You know, there's always a journey, all right? You you find an inkling of the truth and you latch on to it. And through the Spirit, it's either going to take you the right way or the wrong way, man. The wrong way leads you to listening to people who don't have the complete truth. You know, those that teach uh, Edomites can be saved or um, black only Israelites, uh, you know, t different teachers about the, the mark of the beast. You know, all these sorts of things, right? Or you're going to go the right way and you're going to learn the name of the Lord and our Savior. You know, the name of Jehovah Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You're going you're gonna to know about the prophecies. All right? And you're going to be led down the correct path. Right? That's going to hold you in good stead because you're going to have the correct knowledge to deal with, you know, what's coming up, man. You know, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of our times, you know? So, verse 3 says, For they, being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. You know, doing it, doing it your own way, man. Spir talking about spirituality. What does that mean? Jake's always quick to talk about spirituality. But he doesn't really know what it is to be spiritual, man. It says, for Yahweh is the uh, back here, for Yahweh is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. All right, but how are you going to believe? You know, who are you going to believe on? I'd like to know what he's praying to when he's, you know, right now he's thinking he's an Egyptian man. Clearly, otherwise, what's he wearing that thing around? So he's an Egyptian. Yeah, are you? A, one of the people that enslaved your own people? That's impossible, man. Um, let's just get some information on that thing that he was wearing as well. But it lined up here, look. So, uh, where is it now? The Ankh, ancient symbol of life. No, man, yeah, you have by Shemiah Shire's life. It says, What is the general meaning behind this well known hieroglyph? It says, The ark is the most well known symbol to come out of ancient Egypt. So, therefore, we're telling you already, it's not of us. In the hieroglyphic system of writing, the ark represents the concept of eternal life, and that is the general meaning of the symbol. It says, construction of the image, the ark is an oval or point down teardrop set atop a T-shape. The origin of this image is highly debated. Some have suggested that it represents a sandal strap, although the reasoning behind such a use is not obvious. Others point out the similarity with another shape known as the knot, 
or Isis, the meaning of which is also obscure. The most common repeated explanation is that it is a union of female symbol of a sim female symbol, the oval representing the vagina or uterus, with a male symbol, the phallic upright line, but there's no actual evidence supporting that interpretation. And that's the most common called that duality, man. Just like what's in the um the the main Freemasonry, man. That duality. Anyway, I'm not gonna go too deep into that. So this is not about that one, man. But you know, so to make a little get a bit of knowledge on that. So yeah, he's saying man, that he doesn't know what he's doing, he's all over the place, man. Uh I'm in the wrong place, wait a minute. Uh, bear with me, what am I doing? James 4 and 8 says, Draw nigh to Yahweh, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. So he's living, he's still living. You know, to, come into, to come into this true person, the Lord's got to choose you, but he, there's no humility in the man. He's still, you know, earning millions of dollars. All right, who knows what he's doing in his private life still. He's all over the place, he's confused, man. He's double minded, alright? Scriptures say that a double minded man is unstable in uh, in all his ways. Where, where is that now? Uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, James 1 and 5 it says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of Yahweh that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed meaning you know, do you really believe when you're asking of these things of the most high man Right, just just you know, and just because you believe doesn't mean you're gonna get precisely what you ask for when you ask for it. But to ask without having faith is pointless. All right, you can't be wavering in this. Either you believe or you don't. Verse seven says, "For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord." It says, "A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways." All right. So the Clarice, you can see when you look at him, man, his countenance is telling you that he's brave and brassled, man. That he's all over the place. You know, you can't be you can't be an Israelite and, 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 a, and, a, and a, an Egyptian. And that's what a lot of people want to lean towards this fantasy of being ancient egyptians man it leads towards nothing there is no prophecy there's no coming there's no return of uh ancient egypt man it's not coming back right it's not coming back man there's nothing to gain from from believing in all of that you know we got to have something to gain by knowing who we are in truth from the scriptures the israelites and the 12 tribes of israel right so-called black satinas and native americans and all those that are amongst the heathens that look like the heathens, man. You know, and I get that. I say I say that because I, you know, the the elder, um, 
Malcolm says it that way, man, and he says it perfectly. It's the heathens among the heathens, man. All right, because so you can understand. It's easy to understand. I mean, it's like the um, Israelites among the heathens. You know, it's easy to understand. There's going to be Israelites from every um, nation that look like the other nations, man. Exodus eleven and seven says, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So we ain't the same people, man. They're, them people had us in slavery, and they wanted to kill the firstborn sons of Israel, man, because they wanted to keep us into, under control. They had us serv in servitude, uh, in a wicked slavery for, for, for years, man. All right, until the Lord sent Moses to free us. They would never have freed us, man, if it wasn't for the Most High. So stop trying to be your enemy, all right, because you have some fantasy, some, you know, romance in about past histories, because they ain't coming back. Walking around with an arm around your neck, talking about Kemet and all that shit, is not going to get you anywhere. All right, the, what's going to get you here somewhere is the, knowing this truth. You know, following the, the law, statutes and commandments to the best of your ability. Coming back to your heritage, man. All right? That's what's gonna that's what's gonna bring about a change in your in, in your existence. Alright? And and for us that know this, we have a purpose in life. Before we had no purpose. You know, now we serve the Lord, man. Now we know who we are and we have the prophecies to look to. And an end goal, or you know, the end goal is is righteousness and, and away from this wickedness of this kingdom under the under the um, rulership of these devils who are oppressing us. All right, our enemies. <laughs> Let me read. Uh, Where is it? Romans, Romans nine. Because he was talking about, you know, he still doesn't get it, man. Now, the Lord is not dealing with everyone. He's only dealing, whoever he thinks he's talking about. Because he has some inkling. That's why he was promoting Hebrews to Negroes, man. And now he and he knows he's a Semite. Or a Salakia. I'm not going to use their terms. He knows he's a Shemite. Right? He knows he's from Shem. All right. That's why he said, how can he be anti-Semitic? Right. Romans 9 and 1 says, I say the truth in a martial, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach Hamash for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Brethren, kinsmen is of the same kin, the kind, you know, the same bloodline. It says according to the flesh, so there's no getting around that, right? Who are Israelites? Whom, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the, and the promises, right? It's not, it's not talking about any other nation in there. It says the Israelites. If it was talking about everyone, it would say that. It would say, whom are all men on earth or whom are all the tribes of the earth? No, it doesn't say that, man. It stipulates that it's talking about Israel. All right. And that's what we need to get on that one. Keep that one short. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Getting back on that quickly. Because um, he was, you know, he's rocking that ark, man. So if you, you're trying to find righteousness, you're trying to find the truth, man. These these false uh, idols and stuff that our people want to cling to, man. They want to cleave to everything but what is the truth. They, they're repulsed by the real truth. Uh, Leviticus twenty six, and one says, "Ye shall ye ye shall make no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto, for I am the Lord your power." Right. So it you know we have a power, man, and he's a jealous power. Verse, uh, verse 3 says, If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, 
Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. You know, I mean, it will be plentiful, man. You know, what they're doing is getting, trying to gain their bounty from Esau, man. They're doing his ways to gain, you know, their wealth and their riches and their comfort in this world, man. You know? Uh, this is going longer than I expected, but hey, let's just roll with it. I've got a few more scriptures when I get out. Uh, Psalms 96, it says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the earth, all the earth. All right, sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the heathen. All right, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, he is to be feared above all gods because the, all the other gods are false. It says, well, yeah. It's gonna get. It says, "For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens." So, you, how are you gonna worship something that is made man-made? You know, it's like imagine building a like they did that. You know, they built the 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 golden the golden calf, man. You know, building making the golden calf and then worship yourself worshiping something that you made. The potter worshiping the pot. It makes no sense. Um, yeah, man, and as and let's just quickly do because these these um I U I C guys, man, they're they're becoming a liability, man, and it's all it's all on purpose. All right, marching down the street, friggin you know, like doing drills and stuff, man, like this ain't a, we're a spiritual army, man, you know, we don't move like that, you know, you got like, they got drill sergeants and stuff, I don't know where they're getting this from, wearing this, this purple raiment, you know, and that purple raiment, when you look closely, man, it symbolizes the, the same robes that the, the Freemasons wear, man, you know, check that one out, They've, you know, that organization is a complete sellout organization. Uh, this is, um, uh, Matthew 23, and it says, um, the scribe, uh, start two says, the scribes. I was just off from the top. And then spake you how I shouted the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe to do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You know, RUIC isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing at the end of the day. They talk a good game about the law, statutes, and commandments, but there's all sorts of wickedness going on in there. And I'm not saying everyone in it is doing things like that. I'm just saying, as a whole, they're representing themselves poorly. You know, they don't call upon the name of the law, they don't teach the MOTB properly. You know, they're, they're, trying, they're trying to flourish in this world. Instead of bring it, talking about its end coming, man, they do to it. They, I'm not saying all of them, but that's not the general message when you look at them. That's why, you know, people are drawn to them because it's more like the Christian church. The Christian church doesn't teach you that the world's about to end, and things are going to get really crazy out here. You know, they're keeping it on a on a low. It says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be worn and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So they're teaching, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. You must keep the law, such commandments, blah, 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 blah. Which, yeah, you do try, must try to do that to the best of your abilities, right? But are they practicing what they preach? And are they, pre and are they doing things according to the scriptures in the correct way? The Lord never told us to go marching down the street to support in wicked Negroes in the entertainment business 
right? What are you showing up for Kyle Reefle, man? Why don't you show up for your home by showing me your shine and start teaching his name, man? How about that? But they're all for show, he says, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. You've seen them at their uh, Passovers and that, and when they're teaching, when they're up on the on the on the on the pews or whatever, on the, on the big tables, sitting there with, a, you know, and they, you know, like this, like it's a church service, you know, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi. You know, they always got their special titles, and their ranks. They got to be known by their ranks, man. Not to say there is no ranks, but they're all about that, man. Uh, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Hamashiach, and all ye are brethren. Alright, anyway, I don't need to read anymore. I'm going to get one more scripture. One more scripture, and I'm going to close out. So, Matthew 10 and 16, straight to the point. It says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. And harmless as doves so you showing out in the streets right and all you're doing is building up a case for Esau man you already we all, you know in, in Babylon they're already classed as a hate group all right for whatever reason because they're teaching the truth of the scriptures man all right exposing these demons these devils these so-called Jews all right it's all it's all coming out man all right, but we ain't supposed to be showing out like that, man. We go out, we teach the word, we're not making a scene, all right? And it's not because we're ashamed of the truth or because we wouldn't be out there in the first place. But they're doing it on a level where all you're doing is bringing about, you know, you're bringing about um, too much uh, uh, attention in the and it's the wrong kind of attention. That's what I should really say. It's the wrong type of attention, especially when you're out there supporting... Uh, niggas of the world man basically this, this man's in the world still what you need to feel is why do you why do you feel why do you feel the need to go out and support him for man because all of a sudden he knows a little something so he's worthy of you going out there showing up but then you got brothers out here to doing this work in truth and sincerity man and you're calling them bummer lights man like you're mocking uh the, the men that are just teaching the word as it should be taught man Anyway, look, that's all I've got, man. Uh, Lord wouldn't was edifying. Uh, as always, I pray that it was. I'm going to give all the praises once more to you. And I'll say Shalom to the next one. Shalom.